What is going on, everyone? Chris with Journals, Comics, and Pop Culture. I'm over here in my pressing station with my two presses, and today we're going to talk about what presses are the best to use for comic books. Now, I want to make this clear before we dive into this video. I am not speaking to brand. I'm speaking to types of presses and the functions that these types of presses offer okay so let's just go over an overview first before we do if you aren't subscribed to the channel folks i am here almost seven days a week making content please subscribe check the notification bell check out all the awesome links in the description below so the best presses to use for comic books i'm going to briefly explain the few things that i look for in presses now as you can see i have two right here these are the same press. They are more of a generic press. They're a generic overseas manufactured press. Like I said, this isn't about brand. There are name brand presses that are high quality presses that you know you could spend more money on and get a better press out of. But the one thing that I always tell people when they ask me, yo, I want to get into pressing comics. You know, what should I start out with? And I tell them, for the most part, you could get a generic press like these for under $200 and they tend to be decent and they tend to last. Now, this one right here, uh, when I got this one a couple years ago, I did have some issues on it. I made a video about it. It There was a manufacturing defect in it. I was able to mess with the bolts on it because it would get really, it would be really hard to press down and even with you know light pressure and it would get stuck when trying to pop it open. But I've since kind of rigged it to work and I have another generic one right here that I recently got some some months back and I've had no problem with it and they are exactly the same they say better sub up there but I just want to make that clear because it was just that th this one probably just had some some issues coming out the gate all right these presses right here you're going to find a ton of them on eBay on Amazon and they're going to look exactly the same but they're going to have a different brand name stamped on them. And that's what I'm saying. For the most part, they're all pretty much the same. The one thing that I recommend when looking at eBay or Amazon, check the seller's reviews, check the seller's rating, make sure that they have a good good amount of stars or good high percentage of, of, of rating. Make sure they have a lot of sales and you're not just buying one from somebody that has 20 sales and in or low bad low star ratings okay now if i'm not talking about brand here when talking about what the best press to buy is what am i talking about well i'm talking about specs <laughs> and the first spec that i always recommend is the clamshell now uh, i recently got rid of my old swing arm i started on a swing arm and, uh, you know, I, I, I did a lot of good first work on that swing arm, some great memories, but it started breaking almost right away. Now, for those that aren't familiar with the swing arms, uh, the, the, basically the, the top part of the press can swing from left to right. And then it, it does have a clamp down, but it's, it looks different than this. Those things have huge, huge defects. Um, I'm not going to get into the details of why I actually made a video on that, like, years ago, I think like three years ago before I was even doing my channel seriously. So you guys could probably find that if you search under my videos and they're like pressing, but it started, the bolt started to snap, the shoddy welding started to snap literally like just a few months after I bought them. I never recommend buying a swing arm. So I always recommend whether you're going with the generic manufacturer one to save some money or you're going with the more expensive one, I always recommend clamshells. They they last longer in terms of the durability and also they tend to sit more flat and they tend to basically distribute the heat a lot more um, evenly because distribution of heat is very, very important, especially if you're doing t-shirts, but even so when you're doing comic books, okay? Clamshells, number one. The second big thing, and this is the biggest point I want to make today, size. Size absolutely matters. And why? Because of this. These are 15 by 15s right here. 
And if you can see here, I can do two books at a time in each press. The, the size smaller are 9 by 12s That was my original swing arm too. I can only do one book at a time. So instead of needing four presses to do four at a time, I only have two and I can do four at a time. As you guys can see here, um, you know, I got my books. I put my backing board in the center next to the staples. I got my heavyweight art uh, paper right here under the front cover. I also use my uh, Con Air steamer to apply that 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 moisture all right I actually did a video showing off all those techniques on how I do that I have updated my techniques a little bit since then I'll go over those a little bit today here as well too um so size matters the 15 by 15 look you can get a 15 by 15 for 30 40 dollars or more so for me it's not even a point of really like saving money it's like spend the $30, $40 more, get yourself a 15 by 15 because you're not going to regret it in the long run. You're going to be stuck with the 9 by 12, only doing one comma book at a time if you're not willing to just spend those extra few dollars. I mean, if you're dropping $130 on a 9 by 12, why not drop $170 on, on a 15 by 15? Now, another thing outside of doing two books at a time in each, fixing spine rolls you cannot fix a spine roll properly in a nine by twelve now i did a video on how to fix spine rolls too you guys can go check that out as well but let's look at this book right here let's take this stuff out and if i want to fix the spine roll i open the book up to the centerfold okay and i place the book and i, I obviously steam it up because once you get it steamed, it can it, it relaxes the book, it relaxes the spine. And then you press it down just like this. Okay, because if you had a spine roll and then like, you know, the, the, the spine was bent like right here. You flatten it out, you steam it up, you get the spine relaxed. And then boom, there you go and you create, can create your new spine once you do that. And then what I do is I, I still press each side after that. But... If you're doing a spine roll on a nine uh, nine by twelve, you're not going to have as much space. And what's going to happen is, you can still get the spine in there, but like part of the book is going to hang out of the press, and it, you're going to create. You might fix that spine, but you're going to create a new crease. It's going to crease where it's hanging out of the of the nine by twelve press. So, another great reason why getting a fifteen by fifteen press is absolutely worth it all right so i mean those are the two main things folks in terms of why i think getting these types of presses or, or what types of presses are the most important again 15 by 15 in clamshell but why we're here i want to go over a couple of other tips so one thing that i recommend everyone getting with their press is the steel piece all right this right here is stainless steel i highly recommend stainless steel it's definitely more costly, especially right now. I mean, the cost of, of things are just continuing to go through the roof. Right now, I these are I bought one a couple years ago. These are practically doubled in price since I bought my first one. Stainless steel is a lot more smooth. If you're in like I got these off of a guy on eBay, really cool dude. I wish I had his uh, his uh, screen name, seller name off the top of my head, but I don't. I would always email when inquiring about uh, steel slabs because you want to let them know like, hey, look, I'm using this for, for a heat press. I'm using it to press comic books to distribute heat and I need it to be as smooth as possible. This guy that I went through is like, oh yeah, I get a lot of inquiries about people that use, use them in heat presses for comic books. I know exactly because sometimes when you get fabricated metal slabs in the, in the, in the process, you could get, you know, in the processing of the slabs, you could get the slightest little bumps on the sheets. And that slight little bump or roughness, when you press a book, it's going to come into that book. So you need every square inch, every square inch of the metal, of the slab, to be perfectly smooth. Sometimes they tend to get a little rough around the edges and you could just sand those down. But of course, the book isn't sitting on the edges. That's just so you don't cut yourself if you're you know trying to touch it or whatnot so 
that's my recommendation there. These are one eighth inch and they are plenty thick, plenty thick, one eighth inch. I mean, you can even possibly go with, and I got some right here. If you want to save a little money, you could go with the little dust on it. It's been sitting. You could go with the one by 16 inch. Look, I mean, it's still like, I can't bend this with my, I mean, it warps a little bit as I put some pressure on it, but I can't bend it. It's not like flim aluminum, right? Uh, you can use a one sixteenth inch to sit at the bottom if you want to save some money. But the one eighth, I think is, is the most practical. Now I sit them at the bottom. That's the best way to distribute heat. Some people use them at the top too. I don't. That's just me though. I, I have these to use at the top if I needed to put the one eighth on the bottom and the one sixteenth at the top. But after trial and error, I'm getting the most success with just using the one eighth on the bottom. So yeah, that's what I do. Uh, I, another thing that I do is I get my Teflon sheets. I put a Teflon sheet on the bottom, on top of the, the stainless steel. And then I put my books on top of that. All right. And then, of course, you get your backing board inside the book. In the middle, in the center fold of the book. I know that's not the center fold. I'm just messing around here, guys. Your heavyweight paper. And then what I do, I get my, uh, you know, parchment type paper. And I put that right on top of the book. And then I use a backing board on top of that. And once I do that, I get another Teflon sheet and put it right on top. And then I press the, the press down. And what I do for these, and, and I've said this before, and this is just a tip, guys. Each press is going to be a little bit different with the heat. Okay. You have to do trial and error. Anytime you get a press, a new press, even if you've been pressing for years and, and you're solid at it, anytime you get a new press, you're going to want to trial and error with that new press. Time and heat is going to be different. So for me, I use uh, 170 heat and I keep them in the heat for three minutes for any book that is like 1990s and older, any, any book that has the, uh, uh, you know, the newspaper print. 170, three minutes, then I turn the heat off and then I let it sit in there overnight at least for a minimum of 12 hours. I usually like to let them sit in the dry press for, um, or, or the cold press for 24 hours. If it is a modern book with a magazine type paper, I only use 135 degree heat and I only apply the heat for 20 to 30 seconds. That's right. 130 to 135 degree heat for 20 to 30 seconds. That's all those need. If you do anything longer than that, for the most part, you're going to do one of two things or both. One, those magazine type pages in, in modern books, they could st they stick together so easily, so, so easily. And the second thing, they take, they pull ink, they pull ink off of the pages really easily as well. And one last tip, folks, if you are pressing modern Marvel books from, what was it, like 2012, I believe, when they started doing it with the Marvel Now, the digital sticker codes. I made an error when I pressed up my first appearance of Riri Williams. Yes, I know. I forgot about the, the sticker, the little square sticker that's in there. And so now every page, you know, those are like kind of in the middle of the book. Every page towards the end of the book has that little square indentation. The rest of the book is like near mint, but uh, so I even tried to get it out and I got it out a little bit, but it's not all the way out. So you want to make sure that you're putting heavyweight paper or even backing boards between, you want to sandwich that page, that one page, you want to sandwich it between, I would say at minimum of a hundred pound heavyweight paper or backing boards. Cause you don't want that to happen. And, and look at me, I did it with a huge key. So 
Anyway, folks, that is the video for today. So uh, I hope you learned some, you know, just some tips on pressing alone, but also what important specs matter for the type of press that you're going to want to buy for your comic book pressing needs. So that's the video today, folks. Let me know if you have any questions or even just sharing your thoughts in the comments below. Again, if you aren't subscribed to the channel, please, please take the time to do so. Thank you all for watching. Be well. And until next time.